Today we're in video three, which is learning how to make equivalent fractions. So we go, go back to basic definitions. What does the word equivalent mean? Equivalent is fancy for equal. Equivalent means two things that do not look the same, but have the same value. You do equivalency every day in your daily life when you exchange a dollar bill for four quarters. Even though a dollar bill does not look like four quarters, we know that they have the same value. And that's important. In life, things can be exchanged that are equal to each other, even though they don't look the same. That is also true in fraction world. If I eat a half of a pizza, you could also say I ate four eighths of the pizza, or four out of eight slices, because four out of eight reduces to one half. So before we go on today to adding and subtracting fractions, we do have to know how to make equivalent fractions. So if you go to your class notes, okay, I have up here the fraction two-thirds, and I want to make a fraction that's equivalent to it, which means it doesn't look the same, but it has the same value. And I started this off by already giving you the new denominator, 27. So the rule is, how do you make equivalent fractions? How do you change two-thirds to something over 27? Well, if you look at the denominator, how does a 3 become a 27? You multiply by 9. Very good. So that means to make equivalent fractions, we're going to do multiplication. So let's go and do it. To make a fraction that is equal to 2 thirds, you're going to multiply the denominator by 9. If you do the denominator by 9 to balance it, you're going to have to multiply the numerator by 9. And 2 times 9 is 18. So if I had 18 out of 27 pieces, that would really mean I have 2 thirds of the, the item. That's going to be also important in algebra. To make equivalent fractions, we do the same concept. We figure out what to multiply to both the denominator and the numerator. So we do it in steps. How does an 8 become a 32? We multiply by 4. How does not having an A make us have an A? We obviously had to multiply by A. And how does a Y squared become a Y cubed? Well, Y squared can become a Y cubed by multiplying by Y. So we're using our skills from chapter 12. Check it. 8 times 4 is 32. There would be the A, and Y squared times Y would be Y cubed. So to make the equivalent fraction, now we're going to multiply the same thing to the numerator. Remember, to multiply, terms do not have to be alike. 5 times 4 is 20. A times A is A squared. And then there's also that Y. And this fraction, 20A squared Y over 32AY cubed, doesn't look like this one, but it's equivalent. Equivalent means it's equal. All right, let's go to the last example of equivalent fractions in your notes. I have the fraction 5y minus 1 over 5x squared plus 15. And I want to make an equivalent fraction that's going to have the denominator 20x squared plus 60. Now I know some of you could look here and figure out what we multiplied by to get here. But to make it even easier, we discussed this already. To work with fractions, you want your denominators always to be in lowest terms. So one of the things we could do is factor this denominator. It has a GCF of 5, and that would leave us with x squared plus 3. Then if we factor this denominator, it's GCF, we could divide both of these by, that's right, the biggest number is 20, and that would leave us with x squared plus 3. If your denominators are already in factored form in lowest terms, it's a lot easier to see what we multiplied by. If you look, the x squared plus 3 stayed the same. What we did is we took 5 and we multiplied it by what to make a 20? Oh, that's obvious. We multiplied by 4. 5 times 4 is the 20, and then you would have had the x squared plus 3. So that's what we're going to have to multiply the numerator by to make an equivalent fraction, 4. Now here's where we use everything we've learned in chapter 12. How do you multiply a binomial to a monomial? You do the distributive property. 
5y times 4 is 20y. Negative 1 times 4 is negative 4. And now you've made a fraction that looks different, but is equivalent to this one. This is going to become important in our next lesson when we finally get to adding and subtracting fractions with different denominators. So just remember, once we get our LCD, our least common denominator, and we change that denominator, we're going to have to change the numerator, which means we're going to have to know how to make equivalent fractions. And all you do to make equivalent fractions is figure out what to multiply the top and the bottom, the numerator and denominator by. It's got to be the same number, so you've got to physically look. Okay, see you in the next video.